Welcome back to Advent of Code Day 6, 2021. Today, we are talking about lantern fish, and I just wanted to do like a small parenthesis because I find this fish quite funny. So, yeah, here it is. This is the fish that we're talking about today. And if you read the full statement, you notice the word exponentially, which means we're going to have some um, complexity. Uh, issues and uh, we're gonna need to make something that's performant that's gonna be really important so let's dive right in and see how performant we can make this code so first of all we have this input list this initial state so as always I'm just putting it here I'm also taking my template code Template code, you can find it on GitHub. So it is here. We are day, oops, day zero six. We don't need to split a new line. We can split on comma. Um, yeah, we can replace also here. Anti slash n, so we remove all new lines, we just split a new line and we pass each uh, string into a number. So let's just, as always, the first thing to do is to debug the input. Let's call that uh, fishes. Is that, yeah, this is fishes. So we want to make sure our input is correct. Otherwise, it's oops, it's just like so much pain. So okay, we've got here. This is passed as numbers. Everything is fine. We can move in the interesting part here. So basically, we have fishes, and the first thing you would like you would think about here because we want to simulate fishes, is each fish is like, uh, has a, what, what's the right term here? Uh, cycle, so internal timer. So it has an internal, oops, internal timer. For example, uh, if we take the first fish, this is set to three and it has, the like an internal timer of five so we need to keep in memory two things one thing is the current value and the other thing is the full cycle so the cycle here is three for example for the first fish three two one yeah so that, like the most obvious solution would be to do that. Have fish that, and each turn you do fish dot uh, internal timer minus minus. If uh, internal timer is equal to zero, then you do uh, um, fish dot internal timer is equal fish dot cycle, and you uh, here create a new fish so basically that's the obvious algorithm i would say just co translating the problem statement into um, code however because there are going to be so many fishes it is not going to run very smoothly so here we see we have five fishes and after 80 days which is what we need to have we have like almost 600, 6,000 6, fishes, which is huge. And if we take the puzzle input here, actually, let's check how many. So here I'm just splitting on the comma and taking the length of the array. We have 300 fishes in the input. So this is just going to be a huge number, and we cannot do that. So one thing, by the way, one thing that I noticed here also when we checked 
we just have numbers between one and five. So basically, we just have single digit numbers. So that's something really cool. Um, okay, so now the most more complex implementation that I'm thinking about would be to store the fishes in an array. So here we have uh, the first thing is uh, fishes day zero. So for example, if we have just the fish number three, we would say zero, uh, zero, zero, one. So if we just have three, on the first day, it will be like that. On the second day, it will be, whoops, what happened? Second day, it will be like that. So what I'm thinking is a kind of a queue. That, that's actually a queue where we store how many numbers of fish and the index in the array is the day. So here, this is day zero, the fish that I have internal timer set to zero. And yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, however, we need to remember, we need two things. I'm gonna actually write that here. We need the internal timer and we need the cycle. The internal timer is the current value of the fish. So for example, here three is gonna be two, one, zero, and then three. And the cycle is uh, is always three for this fish. <laughs> I'm showing a number and I'm talking about fish. This is kind of funny. So one thing I'm thinking is that we're gonna have an array per fish cycle. Basically here we're gonna have an array for the fish three, an array for the fish four, an array for the fish one, and an array for the fish two. I am wondering if this is too many arrays or not. I think it should be fine. So let's try to do that with just one fish. <laughs> That's gonna be the first thing that we're gonna do. So we want to use const fishes is equal oh, f equal fishes of zero. So we need to say add fish. Okay, we're gonna create a function here. Uh, queues. Uh, cycle. So one thing that's interesting is the fish the first value of the fish is the cycle, if I'm correct. I'm going to read again the prem statement just to make sure about that. I've got some good news, <laughs> which is the cycle for fishes is always seven days. That's going to be a lot easier. So basically, we always have just internal timer, and we know that fishes... Um, yeah. So we just need one queue and we're going to say array of, I think for at first they could start, that could go until eight. So um, let's just put 10, fill zero, or let's put nine, put exactly the right number in the queue. So yeah, that sounds like uh, the right thing. So here we just need a for loop. Oops. A simple for loop between i and here this is 80 days. And what do we need to do here? We need to say a const current fishes is equal q dot shift q dot shift is taking the first element of the array and removing it from the array that's one thing 
And basically, we just need to say q dot push current fishes and q of six plus equal current fishes. Is that is it that simple? <laughs> so uh, what this line is doing, we take the first element from the array. So let me just show you here. We're just gonna do that with the fish, the first fish. fish. So it's gonna be zero, zero, uh, one. Uh, and we have nine elements. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After this element, we take the zero, remove it, and push it at the end, and we add zero here. Doesn't do anything. We do the same thing again, remove it from the beginning, adding at the end, and add it, adding at position six. Doesn't do anything. Then we take this one, remove it from the beginning, adding it at the end and adding it at position six and basically here what we show is we have the fish that was uh, ready to uh, reproduce it is now uh, at this position so it has to wait seven days until the next reproduction and he created a new fish here at uh, that needs to wait uh, seven nine days until this new the, the children of the first fish can reproduce. So yeah, that sounds like it. So now we should. Uh, what do we want to display? We want to display how many fishes we have. Is that it? We want to display a total number of fishes. So here we're just gonna be logging. And to do the here, we need to do the sum of an array. So we are going to use reduce. That is a plus b, starting with the value zero. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> we have something that doesn't work because here we didn't use this array at all. That's stupid. Um, <laughs> so we need to do fishes for of fish of fishes I need to say q of uh, fish plus one plus 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 so here let's log the q first and hide this so basically, the fish number three is here. Fish, uh, the two fish number three are should be here. Zero, one, two, three. So there is a problem here. Fish number one is in position. Oh, why? Why is there an extra zero here? Did I make a mistake here? Maybe I make, made a mistake here with this plus one. Uh, fish number three, zero, one, two, three. There are two fish number four, fish number one, and fish number two. Uh, I think this is good. So after one day, this is there is no new fish, and after two days, there is one new fish. So let's just do that. Here, this is after one day, uh, we need to display the number of fishes. Here, I'm really trying to debug just to make sure like we, so if we have no days, like, so the beginning, we have five fishes. Is this correct? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, after one day, we have still five fishes. That's correct. And then we have six, seven. So one more day. 
Mm, six fishes and another day, seven fishes. So I'm just gonna skip. Uh, we can actually just do 80 days. We have the right amount of fishes and this was blazing fast. So really, it was really good to use a queue instead of using a full simulation of, for the fishes here. Let's try with this big output. And we've got it in a very short, in much shorter amount of time than the previous challenge. So let's dive into part two and see what happens there. Okay, this is perfect. Here, because we have to wait so many days, the fact that we wrote something very performant is going to be key. I think, I think it's just going to be doing 256 here. And it should be good. Let's just try. Oh, that looks like a nice number. <laughs> that is correct. Oh, that was fast for today. Uh, I just want to say... Um, it really shows that you really need to think about performance to, <laughs> to make this problem easier. Um, yeah, just want to say thank you so much for the support in this series. Please uh, drop a like, subscribe, drop a comment. See you in the next one. That, that, was, that was fast. Bye-bye. <laughs>